Hello, I'm Brett. This is a quick video that outlines the interconnectedness between process improvement and OKRs. Now, in truth, they are two sides of the same coin. We artificially chop them up in management books, software, consulting services, but as far as management is concerned, it's all the same thing. Let, let's talk about this. So overall, we always start off with strategy, right? Strategy informs us of where our priorities need to be. So let's say we've got a strategy that talks about attracting new customers. Well, I should be able to assess my processes to see which processes have the biggest impact on attracting new customers and identify within those processes where they need to be performing well. We call those the critical performance nodes. Now, each of those critical performance nodes we then use to build an objective and key result for that area. What are the specific objectives that that department or process needs to achieve? And what are the key results it needs to work at in order to achieve the strategic objectives? Now, obviously, if I see a performance gap, if our process is not performing on that critical performance node, that should trigger a process improvement project. Now, in fact, we combine the strategic process analysis and the OKR work to give us an ongoing strategic project management tool. In other words, in real time, I should be assessing where each process might need support. And in fact, I can even use this technique to compare different process improvement alternatives and identify which one serves us back the most strategy points per dollar. And based on that, we can decide what process improvement projects we need. And in fact, we can then monitor both how that project is progressing. So are we meeting time, cost, and quality goals while doing the process improvement initiative? And then secondly, once it's launched, are we seeing the benefits that were promised in the charter? So this feedback loop. So we end up with this strategic project management machine. Now in the OKR world, the way we do this is we capture the strategy in a strategy map. We identify the objectives and their overall priority, the weighting. And we use that to assess where the projects need to perform. So we list those objectives on the left, core process across the top, and we score the impact of each process on each objective. And where these black squares are, they're the critical performance nodes. So if I'm doing my OKRs for information management, I better have an OKR for challenge our thinking and for make all learning count. So I can identify where those OKRs need to be and then I can begin measuring and monitoring how well we're performing in those critical nodes. And where I see performance gaps, I can use that and this assessment to identify which projects give us the best strategic payback, what's going to help us close those performance gaps. And from there, of course, launch your process improvement, whether you're a lean Six Sigma house, whatever you might be, and then get the feedback on an ongoing basis. So this is how these things are connected. And obviously you can't do process improvement without the feedback and you can't prioritize projects without understanding our objectives and key results. So two sides of the same coin. And hopefully this helps you understand how these two concepts are completely interconnected. Thanks for your time.